Hello there guys, it's me Harry, and as you may know, I collect Deep DVDs. I already did a six part video of my Deep collection so far, as of when I was recording this in December of 2020. But now, um, I'm going to show you a few other bits of Deep Entertainment related media that I own. Basically, video games and CDs. So, this is just a short collection, I don't have many of them, but I'll show you anyway. So here we are, we're going to start off with video games. And we're going to start off with some handheld games. So first of all, we have Sabrina the Animated Series Zapped and Sabrina the Animated Series Spooked. Both developed by um, Way Forward Technologies and published by Simon & Schuster in 2000 and 2001 respectively. They both share the same game engine, but they have completely different stories and somewhat different gameplay. Um, the weird thing about the Sabrina games is that despite the fact Disney um, owned a Deke at the time, it wasn't actually part of their consumer products division. It was actually part of Viacom's, who already did consumer products for the um, live-action Sabrina um, series. So the art style is a little different from the um, cartoon itself. And they don't have any Deke logos or anything, but they are officially licensed. Deke's only mentioned in the copyright. Next up is Inspector Gadget Advanced Mission, developed by Magic Pocket and published by Light and Shadow Production in 2001, I think, or 2002. It was released in the US by Dreamcatcher Interactive. It's a platforming game where you can play as Gadget, um, Penny, and Brain, and you solve puzzles along the way with, the, with their different gameplay styles. It's just a licensed game. It's what you'd expect from these kind of things. I don't recommend playing it. Next up is Trolls Herifair, developed by Powerhead Games and published by Ubisoft in 2005. Yep, Trolls had a video game on the Game Boy Advance. Is it fun? Well, it's, it just exists. It's what you would expect from a licensed game. And lastly is Strawberry Shortcake Ice Cream Island Riding Camp, developed by... Um, by Gorilla Systems and published by the Game Factory in 2006. It was a European exclusive game. And basically you get to control one of the fillies of Strawberry Land or Ice Cream Island. And you play a Strawberry Shortcake and blah, blah, blah. This game is just boring. There's no, there's no fun of, of this game at all. It seems to be a common thing with Strawberry Shortcake license games. They're just not fun. Now, let's go over to the console games and PC games. Here is Sabrina the Animated Series Magical Adventure, an educational game developed by Funny Bone Interactive and published by Simon & Schuster in 2000, or 2001 in the UK. So there's five different mini-games that you can play, and um, you've got to try and sa save Sabrina's um, amulet from Gemstone. I already did a full-on gameplay of this title. It works on my computer, but it won't install properly. So if I wanted to play this again, I'd have to start all over again. Not that it really matters, because there's no replay value in this title at all. But it doesn't seem to matter, because it's still a fun game anyway. So, so here's the disc. It does say Deke Entertainment on the copyright, but it meant... but. Basically, this is a Viacom licensed game because Simon & Schuster was owned by Viacom. Next up uh, is Inspector Gadget, Gadget's Crazy Maze for the PS1. Developed by Vision Media and published by Light and & Shadow and Ubisoft in 2001. This was announced around the time before Disney sold back Deke, so it was probably a separate licensing deal from them. It's a puzzle game where you get to control gadget and do other things as well it's a good game but it just seems like this that kind of gameplay style could have been done with any other license and it probably wouldn't and it probably wouldn't change the gameplay whatsoever and this was before they revealed the um updated version of the incredible world of deep logo so it still has the old the disney era version on there and weirdly enough, this title has it as well. Inspector Gadget Mad Robots Invasion, developed by Similis Software and published by Light and Shadow Production in 2003. There's actually three different versions of the packaging of this, 
One that has an ELSPA rating, one with a PEGI rating, and one that has the Hip Games logo on it, because Light and Shadow was eventually published, I mean, sold to Hip Games. It's also licensed by Fox Kids Europe as well, weirdly enough, because this was during the time when Fox Kids Europe held the pre 1990D catalogue, including this title. This game just sucks. Don't bother buying it. Yeah, it's a 2D platformer. Next up, Gadget and the Gadgetinis, another Fox Kids Jetix licensed game. No Deke logos anywhere, oddly enough. This was developed by TK EKO System and published by Hip Games in 2004. This is a better game than the other one, but it still suffers from being repetitive and the first boss is sort of difficult to beat, despite this being a kid's game. And last but not least, Strawberry Shortcake, the Sweet Dreams game, developed by EKO Systems again and published by the Game Factory in 2006. This is actually not a very bad game, although it is very repetitive in the end. you got to try and beat this four times if you want to 100% complete it. It does have a few unlockables as well, so this is basically just a tie-in to the Sweet Dreams movie, but it actually has a different storyline compared to, compared to the movie. The disc only says Strawberry Shortcake on it because it was supposed to be called Adventures in the Land of Dreams, but they but instead the, it was released as um, the Sweet Dreams game to tie in with the movie. So yeah, this just exists. Nothing much to say here. You get, you do get a trailer for the Sweet Dreams movie in it as well, which is odd because it wasn't even released in the UK. Now we're on to the CDs, which I've put in order. I have 10 of these. First of all is Madeline's Favourite Songs. This actually isn't a Deke CD. It, I count it as one because, yeah, you know why, but this actually has songs from the five specials that Sinar and France Animation did. This was released in 1995 by Sony Wonder. You get... 16 tracks, M music from the five specials. And inside, you have the um, little pamphlet and you have the disc. Next up is Hats Off to Madeline, songs from the hit TV series released by Kid Reiner and Deep Tune Time Audio in 1985 as well. Actually, it's 1996, I got a bit modelled up. And you get 17 tracks on this one from Season 1 and 2. Yeah. And weirdly enough, this copy is actually, it says upside down, for promotional use only, sale or other transfer is prohibited, must be returned on demand of recording company. So this actually must be, this copy must have been like a review copy or something. This actually makes it pre pretty more interesting, if you'd ask me. So I actually own a review copy of this. It's still the same thing, it just has that stamp. Next up, Sailor Moon, songs from the hit TV series. Released by Kid Rhino and Deep Tune Time Audio in 1996. I was actually very lucky to get this CD because these go for a lot of money on um, other websites alongside the other two Sailor Moon CDs, which I don't have because they're too expensive. I got this for £12 and, and, and it was definitely worth it. And it has songs from the um, Deep dub of Sailor Moon on there. If you like that kind of music, then you'll like this album. Next up, Arthur and Martin, the original soundtrack, based on the um, weird movie of the same name, released in 1999 by um, Motown Records and Universal Music Group. Yeah, it has a lot of um, licensed tracks on there from other Motown um, stuff. As seen on the um, movie itself, but it also has some original songs as well. It was also released in Japan as well, even though the movie wasn't released there. The disc is actually weird because it just looks like any other um, music CD. 
which is weird because this is obviously meant to be based on a kid's um, movie. Next up is Sing Along with Madeline, which has all the songs from the third series of the show released in 2002, I think, by Coach Records. Just seeing the copyright date. Yep, it's from 2002 by Coach Records and Deep Tune Time Audio. So it has all 27 songs from the um, Mad from um, season three. And there you are. And then we're ending it up with the Strawberry Shortcake CDs. First of all is Berry Merry Christmas, a um, LP album released in 2003 to tie in with the special released by Coach Records and Deep Tune Time Audio. So it only has nine tracks because this is just a, um, like a, you, 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 you know. So it has the songs from Berry Merry Christmas and it has a few other extra tracks as well. Next up is Strawberry Shortcake Strawberry Jams released by Coach and Deep Tune Time Audio in 2004. This is a UK version of the CD released um, by Spectrum Records and it has all the tracks from the um, first three specials excluding Berry Merry Christmas and and yeah and a few others as well and it's also an enhanced CD so when you load it up to a computer you can access some other stuff on there as well next up Strawberry Shortcake Seaberry Beach Party Music released by Coach and Spectrum and Deep Tune Time Audio in 2005 whilst this copy here is from yeah it says 2005 and it has um, songs from Seabury Beach Party, Playday Surprise, and Adventures on Ice Cream Island. There you are. Next up, Strawberry Shortcake Music for Dress Up Days, released in 2006, I think. And it says 2005. And this has uh, music from Dress Up Days, Moonlight Mysteries, and Best Pets Yet. And it's also an enhanced CD. I don't have um, a World of Friends, Let's Dance, or um, the Sweet Dreams movie soundtrack, but I do have the last one that Coach released, and that's Rockaberry Roll, released in 2008, as I said, by Coach and Deke Entertainment. It doesn't say Tune Time Audio this time, but you, know, you get the idea. Um, it has songs from um, Rockaberry Roll and. Um, Big Country Fun, but it also has a few other filler tracks as well, just because it doesn't have all of them. But I find it weird because the rest of the specials, well, the rest of season four didn't get their music released on CD for some odd reason. Weird, if you'd ask me. And then, and then here's the disc. Looks like it's a burn CDR, in my opinion, or something. Anyways, that's my merchandise thingies done. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and bye for now.